Oh, we were supposed yeah. to do that? <clears throat> hello, hello, and welcome back. We are here for Call of Cthulhu in Cthulhu Goo. We are playing the module Amidst the Ancient Trees. Hi, I'm Lucas. This is Lucas G Variety, and we are back. Wednesday Night Gaming, Call of Cthulhu style. And um, to answer the former question, we will be doing some gear. If you, the regular gear that you would have as your class, I'm okay with you hunting for. And then um, other things that you'll need for this adventure, you'll be getting as part of the, part of the, the quest tonight, part of what we're playing. So, without any further ado, I'm here with Dustin, Dam, and Kurt. We're going to get started with Amidst the Ancient Trees. It is one of the two quests or modules or whatever you want to say, investigations that you find in the back of the 7th edition Call of Cthulhu core book. So, we played Crimson Letters last year, around this time actually, and now we're playing the other one that's in the book. So, come along in the darkness with us, get all gooed up, and let, let's go into the madness together. So, I will start by reading something. I'm going to open up the scene, let the characters introduce themselves, and then we're going to get rocking. We're just going to let it take, it take itself away. So, let me undo the studio mode, blah, 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 blah. And find out what I need to read you guys here. All the stuff. All the stuff. All the stuff. Okay. So, we open up. It's the year 1925 in Vermont. South. <coughs> it's more like Southwest Vermont, which of course is in America. And we are in the street. Mer. We zoom in on the streets of Bennington. The streets of Bennington are buzzing with the news and gossip about the gunfight last night on the edge of the forest. There is talk of police cars, sirens, shotgun blasts, and escaped kidnappers. The locals are saying that three gangsters were killed and two police officers were shot. Some say wounded, others say dead. Posters are going up across town saying that the sheriff is organizing a manhunt to find Lucas Strong's missing daughter and catch the escaped gangsters. Everyone in town is invited to the meeting at the police station. Rumor has it that Mr. Strong has announced a $5,000 reward for the safe return of his daughter and is willing to pay anyone that can aid in her rescue. So we find that it's like it's beginning to be a warm day, mid-August, and we're, we're zooming into the small bustling town of Bennington. And we come in on the uh, sheriff's, the police department, which also doubles as the town hall. And what we see are several cars parking outside, mostly men that are getting out, more men than women for sure, um, that are getting out. And they are trying to make their way into the police station. There's a huge group of people milling about, kind of forming this odd line that eventually kind of comes into one line as the people try to shove single file through the front door. If we follow that inside, we see people that are then scattering out to the tables and what standing room is left. And as we look up forward onto the, uh, basically the stage that's at the front of the room, we see this sheriff in his middle years, this police officer, sheriff in his middle years, with a nervous kind of overweight man next to him who's wringing his hands. And then at that point, the camera kind of pans and it turns to show us um, one Federal Agent Thomas Highbrook. How does Thomas Highbrook come onto the scene? Um, am I am I with the sheriff and those guys then? You can be. Yeah, I described all of that. Anywhere in what I described, you can already be up on stage with the sheriff if you're talking to him. You could just be coming up. However, you want to introduce yourself somewhere into the scene. Even if that means. Oh, I'm already I'm already on the stage. Okay. Probably either talking to the sheriff or looking around in the background. Okay. Um. I'm. I am wearing uh, probably a long black suit tie. Um. I have my hat in my hand, but um, my uh visage is rather. Odd because of my face is covered in burn scars and I have no hair on the top of my head, so it just coats like my whole face. Are you wearing a hat? Um, typical of the day. No, I'm not. Okay. No, but I have a hat with me, but I'm I'm not currently wearing it in, inside. 
Okay. No, I am trying to stay out of like direct view of people. So. Okay. Tell us a little bit about like what what else you look like. Your age, maybe some other features that are distinguishable. Um. Uh, oh, I don't know. It's hard to tell my age, but I'm about thirty-five, thirty-six. Okay. Um. And 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 besides, do you wear gloves? Like, are they are your hands covered because of your deformity? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have gloves on. Um, probably something that matches my coat or hat and stuff. And so pretty much, I'm pretty much covered except for my face and head, which the only way to actually do that would be. I I, I imagine a maybe mask or something. But do, does your coat have the collars turned up to also hide your neck, or is that down so we can see a little more of your neck? I I mean it's it's not up, but I have like. A tie, a shirt and tie on. So I. Okay. Goes. Okay. So. Nope that that works. Um. Okay. Um. So you're sitting there. You're talking to the sheriff, and and we kind of as we pan from the, the the man ringing his hat to the sheriff to this federal agent that's sitting there. Um, we see the deformities and the burns on the federal agent. And then the camera, as they're talking, kind of zooms in and we look at the, the sheriff who also is wearing gloves and his normal, you know, uniform. But what we see up along the left side of his neck, similar scarring that comes up upon his neck like this, right to about the bottom of his ear, where the bottom of his left earlobe is slightly disformed. I'm like, hmm. And... So Thomas is talking to Sheriff Jenkins, and we watch as the camera pans and turns, and we see where Dyer now enters the scene. Comes into play well, here. Dyer's, Dyer is already in the room. He's he's near he's near the door though. Mm -hmm. um, when you picture him, he's uh, early thirties. He's got a kind of a brownish hat on. Um, he's kind of got long kind of brown grayish hair and he's got an unkempt beard. He doesn't look um, normally that might give the image of a uh, crazy kooky um, crazy guy, but uh, this is more of a rugged. He's kind of, he's seen, seen some things and he's survived some things. Look, okay. um, He kind of stands out like a sore thumb because <laughs> on his back is a crossbow, is a machete, and a rifle, and a shotgun. <laughs> he also has a revolver holstered on his hip. Holy he crap. is clearly an outsider, but he's there for a reason. And his facial expressions really show that he doesn't want to be there. Okay, armed to the teeth. Stay. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm still. I'm still trying to figure out exactly how he can holster all that stuff on him. So that might magic. Maybe magic doesn't exist. No, so, we don't believe in magic. No such thing as magic. What are you talking about? Yeah. We don't. <laughs> have you, you haven't talked to Dyer about that, have you? <laughs> Not yet. Whatever. He's just some crazy, uh, crazy mountain man coop. <laughs> American at that. Oh. Anyway, all right. So yeah, people shuffle kind of around you now. Like, what's his hygiene like? I guess because that's not something you can see as well. <laughs> I mean, we still talking dire? Yeah. Yeah. Are you a sticky sob? <laughs> no. I mean, he has he has a cabin out in the woods and. He's able to take care of himself, but sure. you can also tell he 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 gets dirty. He gets yeah he travels. You, you might cabin funk. You can smell earthy. I mean, it's not like we had like spray deodorant back then and like hot showers, right? Like at least not for everybody. Um, so, but you can still smell earthy and outdoorsy without smelling like trash at the same time. So that's 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 the safe assumption. 
Okay. I, I mean, when you look at this guy, it's very clear he does not stay in town. And he likes he likes that. Okay. Perfect. Um, then we, as people shuffle kind of around Dyer, giving him some breath, uh, we, we see how Bernard, uh, your full title, whoops, likes to enter. You don't the scene. need to bother with that. Okay. How Bernard enters the no, scene. Go, go do it. What's his full name? <laughs> Bernard Mowbray, Duke of Suffolk. <laughs> I, I don't give him the subsidiary titles, but uh, so uh, Bernard is uh, in the back of the room. Uh, there's uh, he he clearly dresses he dresses extraordinarily well, but not like probably most Americans and especially not what this area is used to. He's in um, uh, kind of a cream linen suit, uh, three-piece suit, tie, very well kept and put together. Um, he definitely looks as an outsider, but at the same time, he's, he has an air about him like any uh, British noble would. Um, he is uh, there with a concerned look on his face and interest in uh, what the uh, authorities have to say. All right. Excellent. That gives us a really good picture, I think, of all the characters. Three completely different people. And unless Dyer and Thomas have run across each other, being from the same city, no one really knows each other, right? Maybe you guys know each other in passing glance. Maybe you've heard of the name of the other person, but... Uh, it's been a while. I don't know how old um, Dyer is. Okay, um... I, I just said it like five minutes ago, but that's that's I'm fine. Sorry. <laughs> I heard it. You said younger thirties. Okay, lower thirties, whatever you said, something thirties. At least one person is listening. Yay! One of you is thirty-two, and one of you is thirty-seven. So you have a five-year difference, which at this point, it's not that much of a difference. Train. So yeah. then I probably do not know him since I haven't been. I'm from here, but I haven't been here for like a while. I would say years. You've been working. Yeah. So. Okay. That's fine. Definitely. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. Um, are you a Are you a pro he? A what? Are you a pro he? You fighting all the good times in America? Oh, prohibitor. Oh no, that's. I mean, I I am FBI, but that's not my. That's not my department. Uh. Is it? Just as just as historical as a historical point, they were still the Bureau of Investigation. They weren't the FBI until the third. Yeah, I, I'm just looking. I was just looking up hand handgun. Let's stop it. Sidearm for FBI, and I found out that before like 1937, there was no official. They didn't arm FBI agents. They were just they so. just kind of got guns from local sheriffs. Well, so are you pro or anti prohibition? I don't know. Yeah, are you cool, man? Are you cool? Yeah, no, I think we, we I think we need to find that out because I, I I know probably how Dyer swings. I mean, he might have a moonshine maker right in his cabin out house, <laughs> but he might not. He might be real anti. Who knows? I'll have you know that my uh, my character carries around a uh, prescription from his doctor about the uh, proper amount of whiskey he needs to drink every day. Okay, um, <laughs> with a small flask, I'm sure. I'm sure you have a flask with you. Um, or skin of some sort. Okay. No, no. Okay, no, no. He doesn't. All right. Well, perfect. That's... No, he's he's a, he's he's a nobleman. He doesn't carry around that crap. Okay. He's got it. He does it classy. Classy. Yeah. <laughs> um. So the, the clock that's in there chimes ten. And uh, morning or evening? Uh morning. We're gonna say okay. it's it's a Saturday. Uh, mid-August so it's days warming up like it's enough where it's getting enough now like when the nights can be chilly if you're not private protection and you're outside but the days are still rather warm um, so you hear like order all right all right guys order here let's have some attention let's have some attention he goes I am Sheriff Jenkins Sheriff Leroy 
Jenkins. <laughs> That's it. I'm done. <laughs> and the mood's been broken. All right. Bye, uh, bye, Kurt. Anyway, he's like, let's have some attention here. We're going to get down to business. Just a few things. Anyone who wishes to stay, I will be uh, authenticating an official deputization of all of those wishing to participate. He goes, most of you know, Luke is strong. Um, head of the Board of Water of our state of Vermont. Um, as you know, last night there was a shooting. We can answer more questions later. We'll be taking you up to the crime scene where everything happened. And that's where we will begin our investigation. Um, there is There was a gangster. We we'll call him a gangster, but he's just a ruthless kid right from around Bennington here. But you guys know one Sidney Harris. Him and his crew, we don't know how many there are, kidnaped Jane Strong, Lucas Strong's daughter. She's a 16-year-old girl, innocent completely in all of this, and she was supposed to be ransomed back last night. We don't know what happened, what went wrong. Someone got itchy trigger finger, lead started flying. Chaos ensued, both, start, both sides started shooting it out. We lost, I lost two of my deputies last night in the shootout. And we're pretty sure that we wounded one of Harris's men, but we don't know for sure if any of them are dead. So anyone that's got expertise in tracking, we're going to find your talents very useful coming up. But as I said, I lost two of my good men. I'm very upset already on top of this. But Harris managed to keep the girl, grab the ransom money, and make off with both. So now I'm deputizing a large posse. We're going to split you up into groups of three, four, five. And we're going we're gonna to comb the woods uh, over the next week or so, however long it takes, get this girl back. I mean, I'm offering to, to, to shoot on sight Sidney Harris and his gang if it comes to that. If you can apprehend the boys and bring them back, that's better. Bring them to justice. But our main thing is getting Jane Strong back. I got a photo here. I'll pass around so you get to know what she looks like. Um, and with that... We're going we're gonna to open up the store down the road, Arthur J. Spence's Hardware and Gun Store. Arthur J., or sorry, Arthur, Mr. Spence has been nice enough to allow you to take whatever you need. He'll be keeping track. you will allow you to get whatever supplies you need. And I'm going to be paying everybody $25 a day. We're going to be budgeting to pay everyone $25 a day, plus $5,000 for those who bring back Miss Strong. So, I don't care, man or woman, you know, old, feeble, young, I don't care. I am willing to pay anyone who can get this girl. And then Lucas Strong starts he's like, he goes, he, he goes, I'm paying the money, uh, 5000 cash. I, I just want my daughter back. She's my life. Her, her, mother, her mother's been gone for years. She's, she's the only thing I got left in this world. I, come on, guys, just... I'm going to pay that money, $25 a day, eh, whatever, whatever motivates you. I hope, yeah, I just, I want my girl back, please. And the sheriff's like, all right, all right. He goes, any questions from anybody in the group, anybody out there in the crowd? He opens up to questions. And I didn't go over this with you, Bernard, because we talked about it earlier. Are you sponsoring this, or has this changed? Uh... That does not need to be known. I don't think he he's not going to be in the center of okay. it. Okay, I could ask you on the he'd side. He'd rather not be. He'd rather not be like. You know, known necessarily what he's. Okay, so it doesn't really matter one way or another. Okay. Yeah, I mean he he's right kind of extended family to Lucas Strong, so he's really just here for him and concerned about him and is here to help. All right, no spoilers. I just I was like, oh crap, we discussed it. Anyways, so back into it. So the sheriff's like, all right, any questions? Any questions? I, I gave you most all the details, but if you have any questions here before we, uh, before we go and get ready, I'm going to give you everybody two hours, till, so that's till noon, to gather all the supplies and equipment that you need. We'll meet back here, and then we're going to truck up, up to the, up to the uh, Green Acres, not Green Acres, the Greenwoods National Forest, and we're going to begin our search. I suggest at least giving yourself seven to eight days worth of supplies that's three to four days into the woods with time to 
hike back three to four days. There's going to be lots of terrain, lots of hills, lots of brush to cut through. And so you're going to want to make sure that you have all the proper equipment um, to keep yourself surviving out there. I know some of you are, are hunters and woodsmen and some of you are not. So please take that into precaution. So I ask again, any questions? And he goes, he, he looks over at Thomas. He's like, he goes, uh, what do we call you, agent? We just call you agent. I don't know. Agent Highbrook? You <coughs> agent Highbrook, anything you want to add? Any any ideas or things? Um, there's going to be a lot of people out there. Don't just start shooting people at random. Mm -hmm. Be careful. Mm -hmm. it's, it's nigh coming out. Oh, go ahead, Kurt. That's a good advice. It's it's nigh coming on hunting season as well, so there might already be hunters out in the woods. So, recommend you grabbing some uh, some some bright colors, maybe to throw over some of your some of your drab drab dray clothing there. So, but anyway, Arthur J. Spence's store is open. Get guns, equipment, camping gear. So, if there's no more questions, um, go ahead. I'm gonna I I, I kind of got everybody's names. So we're going to do a, an official deputization right now. And basically he has everybody raise their hand and he, he swears off an oath that he has everybody repeat. You know, you know, until this process is done, I deputize every, every man and woman here uh, under the authority of the uh, local Bennington Police Department and the uh, state police of Vermont to um, blah, 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 authorization for all these things to find Jane Strong and bring her back. So... And he swears everyone in through the deputization process. And what was I going to say after that? I think that was about it. He goes, all right, come back here, noon. He goes, oh, wait, come out the door. We're going to group you as you go. That way you can start getting to know the people that you're going to be hiking around with for the next few days. <coughs> and, uh, yeah, there we go. So people start filing out. So Lucas Strong, like, catches your eye, Bernard. He's like... <laughs> you know, kind of like, yo, Bernie. No, I was kidding. Just kidding. No, I'm. I, 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 when people start filing out, I'm gonna go talk to Lucas Strong. I'm gonna go up there and chat with him. County police. There we go. Okay, deputized for county police. So you make your way up. County sheriff. Or county sheriff. yeah. Shut up. <laughs> All right. So you make your way. Oh, man. Private conversations are killer. So people start filing your way out. Like, I think I would see, in, I mean, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but I think Dyer would kind of press himself against the side as people shuffle out because he doesn't want to get caught up in the in the wave of people going out the door. Yeah, does he have to sign up for anything, or is he just going right to this to whatever group? Well, I'm, I'm trying to set it up so, like, you get kind of pushed into this group because, like, Kurt, he's okay. already on stage. Like, Bernard is approaching, and you're kind of like left standing there, and so the guy at the door is like, "Hey, I think these two guys are going. Why don't you, why don't you, why don't you go with them, old Dyer?" Actually, Dyer wants to walk up to the guy who just spoke, Lucas Strong. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, that's perfect. So it's going to be maybe a couple of scragglers that are talking, but basically it's going to be you three, Lucas Strong, and the sheriff. So go ahead. I'll I'll sit back and respond to you guys. Well, Dyer walks up to Lucas Strong and is like, you send my group into the forest. Don't send anyone else in there. Well, the sheriff's like, well, I'm, I, you see, I got a whole room, a whole posse, a whole station full of a posse. Why would I not send more? The more area we can cover, the better. No, that's not true. Have them search in the town in case they get back. You don't need them in the forest. He goes, I'm absolutely not going to be following that advice. Uh, whatever you're, I haven't seen you around. Dyer, right? Dyer. You even got a last name. Well, I suppose if, if you want to send them there, then I, I can't stop you. Uh, just say I did not give you uh, a good, good bit, good fair bit of warning. So, what, what's hey, up, sir? I mean, it's going to be dangerous, obviously, because there's gangsters <laughs> out there. He's already turned. <laughs> 
he sheriff looks over at, uh, at Tom. He's like, "Yeah, I'll let you make sure you keep him under control." By the way, he's gonna be in your group. I think. Yeah, sounds good. Oh, what you got to keep Dyer under control because he just gave someone the cold shoulder. Yeah, the sheriff, of course. <clears throat> now it doesn't mean he's going to, but you know, I think that's appropriate response for the sheriff. Why not? Anyway, let's get Bernard to come right. here. Uh, so uh, Bernard um, says some words of comfort to, to Lucas that, you know, we're going to find his, we'll, we'll find his daughter. And uh, I'm sorry I had to come to this. Yeah, I'm going to go out there personally. Um, really? Bernard is clearly shows some excitement for going out there. Like this is something he's very interested in and kind of has an eye a bit for it. Um, sure. Uh, notice that uh, Dyer gave a pretty good impression to uh, Bernard. And so uh, he quickly makes his uh, excuses uh, uh, to Lucas and chases after Dyer. <laughs> and, like Lucas is trying to catch up with your conversation. He's like, oh, okay, well, you're going out? Wait, really? Did you think you, and you're like already gone. He's like, oh, okay. Thanks, friend. Cousin, right? whatever. Wow, okay. Not really. <laughs> so Bernard gives the cold shoulder and it's like, bye, friend. Dyer gives the cold shoulder. Keep an eye out on him. These are these are two different people. Though. You did it to the sheriff. You did it to Strong. But anyway. You want me to go back and role play why I know Sir Lucas? I can do that too. No, that's but fine. You can yeah. figure it out later. <laughs> <laughs> and plus, I'm also forgetting that Dyer has like five weapons on him. <laughs> yeah, he's the, the, the sheriff was probably like, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> They would know you by your guns alone, probably, if not by your face, right? <laughs> um, so as you're catching up to Dyer, uh, just quickly, Thomas, what's up with you? Um, Dyer's proclamation has me wondering. So I kind of mm. tell the show, I'm going to try to tag along with him and see if he goes, seems to know something. He goes, yeah, you, you got the crazy woodsman and... What looks like the epitome of a city boy. I think that you might be a good go-between. Lovely. Be careful out there. <clears throat> he goes, you, you know, you see anything unexplainable, you know, just get the hell out of there. Okay. He, he you see anything that could game later game. become a cult phenomenon a horror series, you let me know. <laughs> but good. Sh Sh Sheriff shakes your hand like real, real hardly. He's like, I'll see you in a couple hours. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, guys. And I head outside. All right. After the other two. Let, let Bernard catch up to Dyer here, and then Thomas can come in after that. Yep. All right, so I'm uh, going to walk quickly up to Bernard. Give me, give me, sir, I'm a good man. Trying to get walk your attention there. Bernard? Yeah, I'm, I'm going up to talk to you, Dyer. Yeah. Dyer. You said Bernard, that's why I threw me off. Bernard's going up there. Excuse me, good man. Uh, turns around, I'm going to help you, sir. I introduce myself. Uh, hello, my name, my name is Bernard Mowbray. Uh, clearly a very thick uh, or, or an English accent it's it's very obvious um, you probably being uh, not familiar with a lot of English accents he can't really place it but he um, says I'm very concerned for for Lucas you see uh, his uh, sister I know she married a just family member of mine and I'm terribly concerned for his daughter and you look like you're the kind of sort who knows his way around these woods, and I, I want to help. I want to be there. Uh, he, again, has some undertones of somebody who sounds very excited to get out there and do his thing. Um, so whether your impression, I'm, I'm going to leave this to you, is your impression of he's just an overeager uh, foreigner or not, that's obviously up to you. Uh, I, I, I put Whoops. <laughs> I went into another character for a second. <laughs> it's not Apocalypse World. <laughs> yeah, um, so Dyer, Dyer uh, extends his hands out to, to shake his hand. Um, and, and you can, when he extends his hand, you can see he's he's got a lot of scars kind of on his hand. Um, 
it's nothing severe, nothing notable, but it just kind of, you can tell he's outdoors a lot and he's, he's been through some fights and stuff like that. He's like, uh, my, my name's uh, William Dyerman, but uh, I just go by Dyer. Th those fools going out into the forest, they don't know what they're getting into. Uh, that's why I recommended uh, they keep them out of the forest. If anyone's going to find the kid, it's going to be me. If, if you want to tag along, uh, that, that's fine. I just want to, I don't want too many more people if, if there's going to be some kind of, uh, some, some kind of potty. Well, I'm with you, and I'm not a stranger to the woods. I used to hunt a lot back home. Uh, the only one is this me and my man, Meadows. He'd be coming along to lend a hand if that's all right with you. I suppose that's fine, but um, have you hunted in these woods? Admittedly, no. I haven't been to, to the States much, but I'm anxious to see what uh, these, uh, this country has to offer. Fair enough, but um, I, I'll, I'll tell you now, these woods are not like the woods like where you're from. <laughs> There's ominous tone from it. Like close-ups on the eyes that are shifting like... All right. I think Thomas catches up around this time. I probably was going to say, Tom probably caught up by now. <laughs> Thomas, Thomas. Um, you haven't met Thomas. Thomas. <laughs> I've been kicking ass to the ambassador to France. <laughs> what? Sure. When you right. said Thomas, Thomas, I immediately thought of the Hamilton soundtrack. Sorry. Please continue. <laughs> and Thomas looks off into space as he often gets distracted these days. Thinking back Hold on this. Hold on. <laughs> What I've put, so what I've put in the uh, chat just r r briefly there are suggestions of things that might be useful to take with you, um, and there's obviously I think a gear page. I'm not sure if there's one in the. Um, geez, I um, uh, you lost my train of thought. I don't know if there's a gear page. Like stats and stuff in the player's handbook. If not, um, you got the. If, I don't know if you guys have the core book. There'll be stuff there. Okay, I'm, I'm back. I'm sorry. It's, um, suddenly blue flashing lights all of a sudden. I went to seeing if there was something I need to worry about. <laughs> What'd your kid do now? And which one is it? <laughs> no, no. It's What'd you do? Somebody... I didn't do anything. I'm... Jenny, no. Anyway, anyway, you catch up to these two guys about that time. Hell no! As I um come out the door, I uh, I let out a whistle, and my dog comes up behind me. Oh gosh! I gotta kill off an animal now. Anyway, what? What's your dog look like? You're not gonna kill off. An animal. Oh sure, no Maybe. problem. Um, so uh, I come up to them and see them chatting, and I uh, approach them and say, "Hello, I'm going to join you. My name's Thomas. Agent Thomas. Pleasure to meet you, Nard Marbury." Hello, Bernard. From come off a bar, haven't you? I have, admittedly, but it's for a good reason. And your dire, I gather. Uh, dire extends his hand to shake. His name's William Diamond, but dire. Good to meet you, William. Dire. Just packed to the teeth with guns. <laughs> Let me just remind that. And your dog comes running up at this time. What kind of dog is it? It's a, it's a black lab. It's uh, uh, it's full grown. I haven't decided how old it is. Uh, Fine. But he's got. But he's basically a typical black lab dog. He seems to be well, 
well behaved and trained though. Fine. So. Um. Die, you seem to have concerns about other people going in the woods. They you know something you should know. You're gonna be wasting their time. Why is that? It's uh not the easiest to navigate those woods. Uh, best bet is uh, with someone like me who at least uh, lives out there, knows the ins and outs. These people are just going to get lost. They're going to run in circles. They're better looking elsewhere. I mean, I grew up around here. I'm not, not saying I know the woods as well as you do, but uh, with all I can't say I'm, I'm a stranger to them. You'd be surprised at how... And, and he... He kind of drifts off for a second, like he kind of spaces out. Quickly, the forest can change. Well, I don't know if you know this, but I think I might. <laughs> you uh, have residents in these woods? Mm, not in a long time. Uh, I did have a accident in and near them. When I was younger. How long ago was that? Oh, think back. How long ago was that, Sir Luke? You know, if it was a childhood accident, I would say between the ages of probably like 8 and 15. Uh, go with the younger side and say I was 10. 10, so you would have been 27. So 10 years ago, it would have been 1915. Or, uh, I'm sorry, you were 10. Uh, uh, you would have been like 27 years ago. You're up by another 10. No, you're up by a decade. Yeah, like, yeah. it's like, yeah. I, I did my math wrong. It was like 27 years ago. So it was like... Hmm. About 27 years In ago. In the late 90s. <laughs> yeah. For the turn of the century. About 27 years ago. I don't, you, I don't know if you heard about it, but... You've been younger than me when it happened. You lived around here. Uh, apologies to say, I, I don't recall the story, but I don't really pay attention to other people's business. Um, you, you might have been in these woods. It kind of spaces out again 20 years ago, but and he looks back and is like, these woods change faster than you think. Okay, mm -hmm. I'll just have to take your word for it. Shall we? I, I, I suppose we need to get some supplies. Uh, the sooner we get back into, um, the sooner we get back into Green Mountain, the happier I'm going to be. Okay, head over to the supply depot. All right. So you enter uh, Spence's guns and or supplies and guns, right? I I'm gonna tell them that I'll meet them there shortly. I'm gonna get my man. That way we can get loaded up and move it as quickly as possible. Okay. All right. All right. You guys can do your thing. I'm just gonna type out what I'm doing. All righty. So, in the chat, I've put like a list of things that might be you know and they're gonna be heavy packs depending like if you guys just take like blankets to sleep in that's not that's not that's not too bad but if you got like an actual tent it's gonna be like you know oiled cloth on steaks that'd be really a lot heavier so you guys have to make the distinction of kind of what you're gonna take and start recording on your character sheets a little bit i mean i'll keep some notes as well are you planning on spending the night you're gonna. Forest. I mean, they said to gear up for like three to four days into the forest, and then three to four days back. So whatever you, however far you think you're gonna go in, you gotta double that because you gotta travel back out. I mean, you're gonna. So I mean, yeah, it's you're going in for what could be several days at a time. Okay. <sighs> So those are, you don't have to worry about money is not an issue here. Um, and obviously, Dem, or, or I'm sorry, 
uh, Dyer already has his weapons. Um, so it's getting everybody else armed and then the equipment that you guys think you want. Each group is going to be given a whistle so that they can try to whistle for help from other teams. And also each team is going to get one pair of handcuffs from the sheriff, which may or may not be enough for who they find, but you're also we're encouraged to take rope as well uh, for any purposes, but also to tie up other people um, if you come across them. Um, are there any of these items that Dyer might already have, considering he's a, he's a woodsman? I would think that's possible that you could have a lot of these things. Um, food I'm supplies or... I mean, you know, I don't know if you'll have an electric torch, which is a flashlight. Maybe you would. Oh, you probably would have. I mean, I, I'm leaving it up to you here. I just want you to make sure whatever you think you are carrying. And for Bernard, if your man is going to carry it, I guess put it on his character sheet since you have access to it. Um, so I think realistically, he would, Dyer would just probably have a compass or something to mark the trees. Yeah, you can maybe like a water canteen and some rope. I mean, otherwise, in terms of like rations, I mean, he he has a house out in the woods, so sure. But you're not gonna he always you're not gonna be smoke. there though necessarily, or not within range. You're gonna be going. I mean, if if you're moving at a, of like, you know, one to two miles per hour, and you're you're traveling for you know ten, twelve, fourteen hours a day, you're gonna be going miles into the forest, and that's just one day. Right, but you're gonna. So think about not staying in your cabin, but staying out in the woods. No, no, I'm just saying. Like, I think maybe just for him, maybe we can have the marking stuff and the compass. Mm -hmm. Yep, and you can mark things by tying cloth or fabric to trees. But you can also, when you when you you know take a machete or or sorry, like a hatchet or a knife, and you carve marks in trees. That's usually the easiest way to go. We've been here, right? And you would know those things. Make small piles of rocks. Things like that, right? Like you, you, you would know to do those things. So yeah, whatever you think is appropriate, this is for you guys um, to do. And like for rope, I think it would probably become in segments of like 25 feet. Um, but someone someone needs to mark down a pair of handcuffs and someone needs to mark down a, a whistle because you get you get one. I, I, what? Okay, nothing. So you guys decide. I probably did have hand handcuffs but you can have handcuffs already if you think that's appropriate but you guys will get another set of handcuffs and a whistle so you just need to decide between the three of you who's going to carry the extra handcuffs and the uh, whistle i'll take the whistle but if somebody else wants to carry the cuffs it's fine i, I carry those okay uh, yeah i would say with dyer having the compass a water canteen and rope in addition to all of his other stuff he's pretty much set yeah. What about sleeping necessities like, like uh, sleeping like roll? Did you say that? Or He'll sleep on the floor. He'll sleep in that on the ground. Right, like as long as you have a fire going, because it does get chilly. It yep. does get cold enough at night that it can be dangerous if you don't have some type of warmth. Like it's it's just late enough. I'm gonna. Like I mean, if you have a, put down... if you if you have a fire going and sleep by the fire, you don't necessarily need a blanket. Otherwise, you're gonna want a blanket, right? Just just to put it. I put my stuff down. Um, I was thinking, though, I should probably take a rifle. What kind of rifles are available? Um, let's see, nothing that would be, like, like. there's no Tommy guns, right? There's, like, no semi-automatic. Well, no, no, there's, nothing illegal. Um, no, I mean, it's just... They're not illegal. They're not illegal. It's just, it's a small town thing, so anything that'd be harder to get, like, or you find in bigger cities. Um, do you have the core book? Uh, Kurt? I, I do have the core. Book. Seventh edition core? All right. Um, let me find. But that stuff isn't in the core, it's in the investigative handbook. Is it in there too? Or there is a list in here. I don't know if it's the list that's in the core. I couldn't find it in the core, so. There is. Uh, yep, yeah, it's, 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 uh, page like 400, 401. Yep. Yeah, you find supplies, chapter 16, it starts at page 399, um, slash 400. Um, but yeah, you, let's take a look here. Firearms are going to be, so weapons list, you got things from bow and arrows. I mean, I've already got, I have a sidearm. Sure. 
I came with, but um, I was thinking we take a rifle of some kind. Let's go to rifles, and we'll look in. We'll look in the. We'll look in the era. So anything that says 1920s is up for grabs. Like you have a 22 bolt action rifle. 22 is not quite as powerful, but you got like a 30 out lever action carbine, um, a 45 uh, Martini Henry rifle. That one actually, I don't know if that would be there, but I mean, just look at the ones that say 1920s era. Um, and I mean, you got rifles, shotguns, and sidearms are probably your main thing. I think I would stay away from, yeah, all the assault rifles are modern era. And submachine guns are all modern except for the Bergen. I, I'm taking the elephant gun. Oh, that You think that's appropriate? <laughs> 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 well, Why is there an elephant gun in this town? Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's... I must say that's one of those... You can make... How about this? If you really want one, you can make a luck roll to see if there's one there. No, I was, I was kidding. Um... And not the 22, the two is two. So I was thinking the 30, 30 out, I guess. Probably. The 30 level action carbine. Probably something. Sure. Okay, and then. Don't do that. And then ammunition. Um, now, there's your typical am ammunition, right? But you, there's, there's, there's slugs like buckshot, right? Um, but there's also pellets. Or so-called bird shot, and then you also have something like not for, no. not for rifles. Well, I guess that's for shotguns. I guess that's more shotguns. And, yeah. And then I was gonna say there's also rock salt. Um, that's also would be shotgun. And it depends if you want to take a shotgun or not and have that. I'm just saying shot uh, rock. I'm, rock, I'm gonna take a rifle. Well, rock salt is non-lethal, so I guess it depends on your attitude towards the kidnappers and anything else you see. Well, I have to shoot somebody. They're gonna get shot. But, <laughs> that's that's completely he's a, fine. He's a he's a federal agent. They uh, they shot first and asked questions later. Yeah. All right. So so that's a thing. That may be but, good mentality um, coming into this game. What? I didn't say that. Nothing. 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 Tra la la. Um, nothing. Nothing. Tra so you, what's your handgun that you have, Kurt? I took a forty-five automatic. Where's the 45? Oh, yeah. 1920s, 45 automatic. So your base range is 15 yards. Okay. Nice. Uh, just make sure you, you note down your ammunition, like what you think is a decent amount that you would have. Um, and then. Well, for my, my pistol, I have um, 28 rounds, 7 in the gun, and then 3 reloads. So that's, I think that's more than sufficient. Okay. What I would normally carry on. As far as the rifle, I don't know. What should I make? Um, bullets and gun and magazine uses per round. I mean, I could if I if it just took like a box of bullets. And yeah, I, um, I'm looking for to have ammunition written down. Um, what was your rifle? Uh, the thirty uh, action. Level I mean, I would say like a box of 50 bullets. We'll say that they come in boxes of 50. So how many boxes are you going to take? Uh, just take one. I'm, okay. If I need more than one, we're in trouble. <sighs> well, yeah. All right. So those, you got your sidearm and you got a rifle. To be realistic, I can't imagine I'll take more than 50. So. Sure. No, I'm more than one box. That's fine. I just uh, so you got your two firearms. What were you thinking about for your your gear that you thought you should the gear you think you should take? Oh, okay, I see it. I I didn't write it down. I take a I took a sleeping bag tent. Well, thing. Is it's probably it, a backpack of some kind. Is it is it a? You can have a knapsack. That's fine. Make sure you write that on there too. But is it a sleeping bag and or tent? They're different. A both. So you're taking a tent. And you're taking sure okay because you can also take like take a tarpaulin which is a tarp, and also like you know throw it over a rope to make like a makeshift tent which is. I mean, I just take a one small one person tent and a one person. If I don't, if I decide, if I decide I don't need it, then I can just not use it. But a sleeping bag for sure and the tent. So yeah. a one person tent and a sleeping bag. Yeah, I took I got an electric torch with some extra batteries, some food, a hatchet, some matches, a compass. Water skin, water, and the whistle, handcuffs, and an amp Okay. 
I want to know how many, write down your food as in how many days worth of food you need to have like two solid meals in a day. So that's what I want you to write down as far as rations for days worth. Like I need. Uh, like, they're saying three, so I need at least six days worth of food. I want, yeah, I want that to be specific so, on your character sheets. Maybe a little extra and go. Go ten days worth of food. Good. Ten days worth of food. Okay. Your 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 weight. You're carrying a lot of stuff at this point. Just so you know, you're 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 hunkered down a little bit with your with your gear. Um, that's okay. It's fine. Um, it's fine. And this is just for moving around. Uh, if, if we get someplace where I have to dump something, I will. I'd rather take too much and have to leave it than okay. like not enough and then not have it. Nope, that's fine. I just want to. And I've asked. I, okay, we got what's on your list. I, I want to know for everybody and have it. Have you have it written on your character sheets? Exactly your firearms and how much ammo you have, and then how many days of food. That's how I was just telling them, Dyer. Like, uh, like just make sure you have an idea of your ammunition. I'm not gonna say. I mean, I obviously don't go crazy, but like Kurt has a box of 50 rounds for his rifle, and he has like a full handgun with like three refills on it. You know, so as long as you have that kind of noted, and then how many days worth of food you have. Kurt's taking 10 days worth of food. Which is a, a a sizable oiled sack of of rations, to be honest, and then tried shit, but you know whatever. Yep, and, and this thing, if you're out there and you can shoot, you can snare a rabbit or shoot a deer, you can you can eat some fresh meat. That's absolutely it's a, absolutely it's fine. An, it's an MRE. I need it like five minutes. It's nine o'clock. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yep. Can I have five minutes? Yeah. Yep. I, I'm not doing the break. I just like Dem snuck away and came back. You can do the same. I'll talk to these other guys and then we'll keep going. So I'll go to, um, we did Kurt, or I'm sorry, we did Thomas. He's set with his stuff. Who wants to go next? It's kind of like, here's the gear I took. Here's the guns I took. Blah, blah, blah. It's, we can uh, we can do mine since it's pretty much all set anyways. Yeah. Um, so he's got one belt around his waist on the right. It's a, um, a sheath for his machete. Mm-hmm. On the left is a holster for his revolver. And then he's also got like a strap that's got three kind of attachments on it. And one holster is his crossbow. I love the crossbow. Another, another holster is um, a carbine. And a third one holster is a shotgun. Okay. Um, and then we'll say kind of on his front belt, kind of off to the side, it has his bag of stuff, which, you know, um, and his canteen water bottle. So in that bag right now is, is the compass uh, and, and some rope. And then whenever ammo, I decide to okay to give him. Um, I was going to say for the ammunition when it comes to the shotgun, because there's an option. You can have all three if you want. Um, you have things like slugs, right? Like buckshot. Uh, you also have uh, bird shot, which is pellets, where it sprays out. And then if you want to go non-lethal, and if you think it's important, you can also get rock salt, which is basically like spraying you know, chunks of salt, which hurt yeah. like bloody First hell, one. but are non-lethal. First one. Slugs? Slugs. I could see you one having... The ones that does close range damage right well yeah but also i could see you having bird shot in case you actually hunt birds uh, a slug no 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 a slug is really for a long range yeah 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 bird shot would so long range. yeah if you have bird shot is for exactly what it sounds like generally shooting birds yeah because it sprays out and has a better area of effect to hit a bird that's flying through the air yeah they tend to be smaller pellets that spread out more make it easier to shoot a bird buckshot is uh th uh thicker Mm -hmm. um, generally, I mean, shotguns, they can shoot a, a decent distance. Um, That's where your rifle comes yeah, in. Yeah, slugs, slugs are generally used for shooting something, you know, yards away. Most. Not saying you can't use a point blank if you, if you, if you have to. Obviously, whatever. Right. I just want to give you the options. Like, I, I would suggest you... I, I would <laughs> Shooting somebody with a slug at point blank... It's gonna hurt him. It's gonna be messy. 
It's not going to change the damage of the gun. I'm not going to worry about it that much. I just, it's it's just more, it's, well, I mean, it could really, but it's not going to be that important. I just want to have an idea if you have like non-lethal rock salt, if you're just going against that and getting the other, the other two. Because I can see you having the other, the other ammo because of you being a survivalist and all that. No big deal. I just want to put the thought in your mind so you can just write down what you want. And just the only thing I want to, I really want to get specific on is how many days of food you pack up. Oh, all the food. All the food. We'll do. Let's do three days. Three days. Because he, he hunts, obviously. Okay. Three days of food? Yes. Okay. So you guys are shopping. We're going to get to Bernie in a minute. And like Bernie, you got your man uh, Meadows. What's what's Meadows like? Just to give him this NPC a little bit of color here. Um, okay. Uh, I did put a picture in there. Oh. So you kind of see that a little bit. Um, Meadows uh, seems like a you know, pretty uh, strapping uh Youngish, middle-aged man, you know. He's probably he's, he's he definitely looks older than uh, Bernard. Okay. Um, probably, uh, you know, probably used to. He is definitely used to physical labor. Um, normally, pretty well-dressed guy, but again, he's also uh, changing um, into uh, more appropriate traveling clothes. Uh, you know, wood, sort of woodsman. Oh, that's right. You um, you were you split from the group, and then we're coming back with him. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, he's uh, he's actually loaded with uh, traveling uh, gear, uh, backpacks, that sort of thing. Okay. And, he's his. Oh, good. No. He's a he's a servant. He's, he's a. He's your valet. He's the. He's my valet. <laughs> your valet. <laughs> I love it. Okay. All right. Good. Um, as you you guys are you know redressed or whatever and coming into the store to get your own supplies, you see like this man and woman outside and they're as you're passing. She's just like, "I want you to be careful, Henry. You're going up there." He's like, "Martha, that's fine, that's fine. You know all them stories are just ghost stories." She goes, "No." She goes, "I heard that they got them crazy Indian burial grounds up there. They're supposed to be haunted." He goes, "He goes." The Indians moved out a couple hundred years ago. They ain't been around here. If they have burial grounds, they don't. They don't even care. It'll be fine. And you just kind of pass that as they, as you walk into the store or whatever it is you continue to do. And she just seems like a wife that's worried that her husband's going out, and more scared about the ghosts and goblins as opposed to the real danger, which is the gangsters who have guns and a kidnapped girl. So, Dyer turns to the wife. Cause you say he overhears that, right? I was saying Bernard, but oh Bernard, okay, never mind. Never mind. But you can you can do a listen check if because uh, they're just on the outside of the store. So if you want to throw down a listen check, uh, you know what? What you, the hell? What's the worst that's gonna happen? Yeah, I would use the green dice for the normal rolls. Um, okay. No. Oh, use the green dice. Well, is, this is it's a normal roll. Yeah, the gray dice are gonna okay. be uh, when you um, when you have like bonus and penalty die. But okay, so. You can also change as and change it to your character instead of them rolling. Yeah. yeah. It could be uh, Dyer. So we'll just say uh, Dyer was in his own world and just didn't hear shit. Okay. Didn't hear stuff. Sorry. <laughs> no, yeah. He didn't hear nothing. And Bernard and Meadows walk in to gear themselves up. Um, Thomas, you're like, you're, you're hepped in. You're talking to, uh, you find the owner himself, right? You're speaking to, oh man, I'm not, mm -hmm. on, not on the right page anymore. Let me find this module. Well, I'm always on the right page, so. <laughs> Good. Good. Good for you, sir. I got to, sorry. I have to get a better PDF. I'm not happy with this one. Okay. Better than uh, the book? Yeah, it doesn't have, like, when you can click over and you can get all the chapters and exactly where you want to go. Like, it doesn't have that. So. Oh, you can put that. You can put bookmarks in if you really want them. Yeah, I, I just. Have the... I have it and I'm lazy. But you're right. 
Okay, so you're talking. You're talking to Arthur J. Spence. You're checking out. He's like, he's just tallying everything. He's busy. He's all over the store, trying to like him and his like shop boys are trying to like take you know note take you know mark and all the supplies that are being taken because if stuff doesn't get used, it can come back. But otherwise, if it doesn't, he needs to know how much to charge the government. And uh, so Arthur is like seeing to you right now, Mr. Spence, and he's like, he goes, agent, huh? Bureau agent, way out here. Yeah. Well, wait. I'm here as a favor. I guess I guess he's maybe old enough. Like this guy might be old enough. Like he might remember you. Do you think is this a guy like you would know? Like he's up in the shop owner for. Like, I, 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 that's kind of up to you, man. I I, I think. I don't, so. No, I mean it's up. I mean I'll, I'll say yeah if you say yeah. I mean I like that idea. I'll say yeah. All right. Sure. Yeah. He's yeah, like he probably remembers me. He goes ah young Thomas. Ah, you come back for you come back for this manhunt? Is that why you're out here, or are you just back visiting your your folks? Uh, I came back in favor of the sheriff. He uh, he called me a day or so ago and asked me if I'd come out and give him a hand. Oh, I think that's great. I, I mean, especially you being a bureau agent. I mean, you you know the law. You know what to do. He goes, uh, he goes, that's that's great. He goes, just he goes. I heard lots of rumors of things out there. You know, besides gangsters, and I don't know if any of it's true, but you know, weird stuff happens out there in that forest. So you'd be you'd be careful out there. I mean, you got your trusty dog. That's good, but I heard I know this is just rumor, but you know, I heard that that you know they got uh you know watch out for the ghosts of old Civil War deserters. You know, defectors when they when they try to hike out of the U.S. to get to Canada right through Vermont's woods. You know what I'm saying? You ever heard that rumor when you're growing up? Them, them, the Union soldier ghost stories. I mean, I heard, I've heard, lot, most of those stories. Most of them turned out to be to be like malarkey, but you know. Yeah, that one probably still is. Go around. Dyer, you can you can overhear that one if if you if you wish, because you're in the store with these guys. It's bustling around, but it's uh, definitely a lot easier to pick up. He, he, he hears it, and he doesn't say anything. He's like, uh, these people in this town don't know. Yeah. These people don't know Jack <laughs> Squat. <laughs> squat, that reminds There's me a of... Living, down down li- living in a van down by the river. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, you hear caravan. another... Excuse me. You're living in a caravan down by the river. Yeah, see what I did there? You hear some other guys like... I wonder if that Sidney Harris that's out there found that Sasquatch. I heard Sasquatch lives out there. I don't know. I mean, if it's the Sasquatch, but there's some big giant furry man. I wonder if they got Sasquatch on their side. I mean, he could be holding the girl, running off with the cash, doing all kinds of stuff. Who knows? I mean, these are so there's Bernard just... really doesn't give these stories any mind. <laughs> He's used to crazy villagers who always have rumors about ghosts and other stupid oh. stories. Oh, it's so Let's typical. Be honest. Back in England, same shit. Yep. Oh, it doesn't change. Those pe- these. Oh, I mean, same crap. Yep. <laughs> these stories are okay. the same. That's a lot for prime time. I I, I found that out. Ah, yep. It's it is prime time and it's adult. It's TV MA for mature audiences. Some sexual content, alcohol use, and violence. Wait, what? I just put all the things up there. Anyways, so you you hear these and some other rumors and other things going around. Um, you hear the the Indian burial grounds one again that comes up. Um, you hear the the you hear the name Joseph Turner come up, which was more specific part of the Civil War story. Yeah, a, 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 a supposed to be definitely a Civil War deserter, a defector. Um, the Sasquatch thing though that came up already. Well, as long as the Joseph Smith, no. American Moses. <laughs> Uh, and then I always forget what's it called. Um, there's rumors. Oh, the creature that's in the forest. It's usually, a, I think it starts with Sasquatch. A, no, it's like starts with a W. I think. Wendigo. Wendigo. There we Wendigo? go. Wendigo. 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 Yeah. Wendigo. 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 Not werewolf. Wendigo. 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 Yeah, somebody even brings up the Wendigo. Wendigo. Yeah, I heard the Wendigo around here flies people up in the air and. Burns their feet off and drops them, and they die, or they don't die, and they just go mad. So yeah, you hear all these rumors as you're gearing up. And last one I got down here was Bernie. 
Um, how much food did you take? What kind of guns did you get? And what kind of supplies did you end up shacking onto your man Meadows there? Okay, so uh, uh, Bernard's got, uh, he's got the handcuffs that I mentioned. He's got some rope, took a glass lantern. Uh, he actually has some binoculars. He carries a notebook and pencils. My man, he's got uh, the bedding, the tent. Um, he's got all the food rations. How much food? Well, he's going to have to take a lot because it's carried it for himself and for Dard. All right. Write down however many days of food you think you should. 20 days worth. <laughs> there we go. So that's 10 and 10. Um, yep. And uh, Bernard's the one who's carrying the weapons. He's got a shotgun, which he seems very comfortable with, again, okay. uh, from his time. From sure. His time. And just as a sidearm, he decided to get himself a nice Colt 45. <laughs> My man. I I 100% approve that choice. I Go ahead. Um, yes, it's one of uh, my personal actual favorites. <laughs> Colt forty-five. It's not. Yeah. It's not just malt liquor anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. The nineteen. The nineteen eleven. One of the greatest handguns ever made. <laughs> All right. So there you are. Um. Oh, good. Yep. You guys all equipped up and feel as though you were ready? Sure. No, I don't feel like I'm ready, but, you know. Why not? <laughs> because I feel like I'm going to regret not taking something. I just want to take everything. Well, I I have always have. Uh, had pretty much no restrictions on you at this point, so. No, uh, I'm fine. That's good. Let's do it. Dems or Dyer's like I'm I'm following the I'm I'm following the lead of uh old Shackleton over here. <laughs> old Dyer only has three days um, of food. Dyer. Yeah. I mean uh, this guy's gonna get me through this alive. <laughs> <laughs> I like how we're all laughing. Why is that funny? Guys? Every di every Dyer for himself. All right. So and then we're gonna begin here, all right? Uh, let's see. All right, so it's it comes to be you know just before noon, you um, you guys go north of town, uh, just a little bit. Like Dyer, you might find yourself living out this way. Maybe you're south of town. Even the woods extend basically north and east of Bennington, uh, maybe even like a little bit southeast as well. So basically, like heavily east, like whew, and all the way up to Canada, the woods run. So. You, it's it's a huge, huge national forest, like just hundreds of thousands of acres. I don't know. Thousands and thousands of acres. I don't even know the right. I mean, I could Google it, but I'm not going to. So um, you get up there and you have all the different posses. We'll say there's probably like 10 different posses, each between three and five men, um, all geared up in their various ways. You guys are one of that number. And sheriff's like starts pointing. He's like, "All right, you guys are gonna go up that way. You guys are gonna start this way. Um, you're one of the first group to be shown your starting point. Um, and it, you guys start out right at the scene of the shootout on the previous night. The site is newly formed as a newly formed clearing about a hundred yards across the edge edge of this clearing to the forest, forming a, a wider area marked for logging. All right." Um, a dirt track from the main road heads over a small field to the edge of the clearing. And it's littered with short stumps and a few piles of fallen tree trunks, and then surrounded by tall, looming trees that stand close together. Scattered over the site is evidence of the events of the previous night. And you guys can see it as you get up there. You're seeing shotgun shells and bullet casings, bullet holes in tree stumps, and uh, a couple, well, you probably see some heavy laden blood stains as well as we get there so you guys get there and he's like the sheriff's like all right you guys going this way you you guys go that way fan out you go that way remember you got your whistles all right he goes and you guys he goes thomas you know you guys if you would start more on the southern side here take the old logging path not necessarily take the logging path but i think and he gets closer to you guys he goes i 
think that's it's it's the closest spot to where the shootout was. You know, he goes, I have the most confidence in you, uh, and also old William there. He goes, so as far as just getting the man and tracking him and everything, he goes. If you st- on the southern side, I mean, you follow the tracking, but I, this is where the site of the crime was. I think they headed east right into the forest here. I think you're closest to where the crime started, you know, where the scene started. And uh, I want to give you the, the opportunity to, to make the best headway, all right? Okay. So, so go ahead. And he's like, all right, y'all, start your investigation. I don't want to say I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to head out with this. With uh, Mr. Strong himself, we're going to do some uh, peripheral searches around here for some other clues. I got some other business. He goes, come back as soon as you can. Y- you know your duties. So any further questions, I'll, I'll be hanging out here for a few minutes. And I'm going to let my cat out of the room. I'm going to let the cat out of the bag. Um, otherwise, what do you guys want to do? We lost our tracker. Where'd he go? <laughs> <laughs> You guys immediately are find yourselves somehow back in town. You're like, wait, what? So. You lost our tracker. All right. Well, you are basically put right in the middle of the crime scene. So. Mm-hmm. Oh. Okay. So tracker's back. I'll reiterate. He he separated all the groups, and he kept you guys to the southernmost side of the groups as you go eastward into the forest. Um, he started you closest to the, the the crime scene where the shootout was and thinks that you guys are probably the most positive group as far as with your expertise. So he wants to give you kind of the, the head start in what he thinks is the best the best tracking area. So you, you find yourselves in a place where there's definitely gun casings, shotgun shells, and you do see some blood stains where it's obvious that the police officers were gunned down. So across a short clearing of, of cleared trees with stumps, the forest begins. What do you guys want to do? Well, let's head down over to the uh, trail and see if we can pick anything out. Oh, yeah. He said he's, he's also, you guys are also closer to the logging road. So it's not like a road road paved in any way. It's more of like an old two track that kind of goes east into the forest. And Thomas, you would know this. And of course, Dyer, you would too, that... It heads, you know, way, way east and north to like the old logging community that's been shut down for five, six years now. But it's it's closer to a river where they used to log trees. So um, he said that that's kind of where you guys are closest to compared to the other groups. So anyway, that's all I got to give you. Well, well, Mr. Dyer, I trust your sense of direction in these foreboding woods. Please lead on. Uh, hmm. Dyer doesn't say anything, and he head, and he starts heading towards the old logging camp. How far away is it? How many miles? Um, I uh, it'd be a couple of days truck on foot at this point. On foot. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's um. I mean, it's like I said, it's a like a basic two track, so it's an easy way to stay on a road as you go, but. That's not necessarily where the the tracking the the trail is going to be. So, I mean, basically, the, the you know the gunmen, the gangsters would have come out of the woods with the girl. The police officers would have been closer to where you guys start by the railroad, and something happened and the gunfight started. A couple officers got gunned down. The gangsters grabbed the money, kept the girl, and ran back into the woods. So you got to find. Obviously, tracking is very important here. You got to try to look for blood, footprints, whatever, because they they did say that they felt that they definitely shot one of the gangsters at least. So it's up to you guys to start tra- to find their trail, basically, into the woods. Um, I'd like to do a track roll then. Yes, please. And anybody else that has tracking or wants to may attempt as well, um, or you can leave it to just your tracker. Oh, <laughs> now. I mean, you, I can try to track. You can push the roll I've if you ha- like, Dyer. If you're like, no, I th- really think he would get down in the dirt and really get down and you can push the roll if you'd like to and do it again if you fail again then ill consequences um but i can give you an immediate re-roll if you tell me like this is like trying to find something what spot oh man your track is a value of 50 okay 
So spot hidden so would, not, would, would not be like trying to find city? blood and stuff, right? No, no. Spot tracking is trying to find a specific trail and track to the woods. Spot hidden would be trying to like I want to try to find blood footprints in this immediate area or something in the immediate area, and I'll allow spot hidden as well. Go ahead, Dyer. Oh, okay. Dyer? No, I was just asking. Or do we have this set up so any of the rolls go below seventy? Oh, wait, did I do that right? Yeah, you you, you rolled the wrong one. But no, that's fine. it's it's still the same roll, and you rolled a thirty-two. Um, which is under the value of 65, so yes. Oh, so, I'm half under. Is that good? Yes, you want to be under your roll. Uh, you actually have a hard success, so you do very well. Um, okay. So you guys start to follow where you find, like at the edge of the woods where the gangsters would have been, you see several shotgun shell casings and some rifle casings. And as you step in, like Dyer kind of like goes in off to one side and I'm not sure. I think you get lost in a previous thought about the woods or something, but you kind of phase out again, like you have been a little bit or however mm -hmm. you want to explain it. You just, you can't track from it because you get lost in a memory or a moment, right? So we'll, we'll have um, Dyer... He just starts kind of going in an erratic search. Not erratic like he's frantically searching, but like he'll take a couple steps to the right and then he will go to the left mm -hmm. and then he'll turn around like he's he's tracking something, but it's, he's like it's, he's in his own world and he's just kind of like going in circles. He's tracking his own thing, not necessarily this specific thing. It's his own thing. Whatever that He's is. He's tracking something. Something. He thinks he is. Yep. And then at Bernard, <laughs> he meadows next to He's like, Roy, uh, is this the man we want to follow? Well, hey, let's hope America has a whole lot more to offer than this gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And that's when you look down and you see a nice spot of blood. A sizable spot of blood on some like low growing brush. Oh, oh, within the uh, brush is the the blood. J just within the, in the wood lining where there's some low growing brush that you can easily step around, like you know, like small wooded woody things that grow like to your knee or waist high. Um, you you see like on a, on a leaf about this big, you see a nice splash of blood, and then another one below that on the ground. All right, I call it. Gentlemen, gentlemen over here, I think I found what we're looking for. Okay. I come and look. And I show them the blood. Ooh, blood. Yep. And from there, you can establish a small trail into the woods. Um, and you guys, if nothing else, set off into... Easterly, Easter into the wood, or Easterly, yeah, Easterly direction into the woods. Dyer, do you snap back when he says blood? <laughs> sure. He's like, blood, that's my secret. That's, that's my special word. Ooh. Like tasting it. <laughs> blood, that's what the that's <laughs> forest loves. It's, it's the secret word of the day. Blood, <laughs> blood. Do I, am I, do, sorry, as a side note, mm -hmm. whenever I use a skill, am I supposed to put a checkbox next to it? If you use a skill successfully, yes. Uh, noted. Thank you, sir. Yep. Yeah, something you guys have to remember because I never, I'm not usually looking at your character sheets, so I don't remember. And by the way, I like the uh, Happy Gilmore and the, the golf caddy side picture. <laughs> Bernard and Meadows <laughs> take off. Mm -hmm. um, so you guys head into the woods, um, looking back and forth. I think Thomas is trailing. Uh, you got Meadows keeping up with Bernard, but between Bernard and Dyer, maybe, our, you, maybe you fan out in a line. Maybe you, someone takes point, I guess, uh, however you guys feel that your group wants to move. And you guys are... Um, Go ahead. Have to... Uh... Which direction are we moving then? What? I was asking them, which direction are we moving then? Oh. Ready? That's Dyer and Bernie talking to you, not me. 
Dyer's just kind of looking around. Um, gentlemen, I'm, you're the experts here. Agent Tracker, I defer to your expertise. We should probably follow the blood trail as much as we can. So uh, let's see if we can follow that. All right. Uh, I think that's the wisest course. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's. I mean, we're, we're getting off the ground here. So you guys make your way east, east into the woods, and you see the trail does not go in a straight line. It goes out into the road. It goes back north into the forest. Sometimes across the road into the southern there. part. Um, you go there. for what? Sorry, I was gonna ask if they're like trampled, um. Trees or brush and stuff, and like somebody's panicking, or we just yeah. I mean, because it seems erratic. A little bit erratic, yes. Um, it does seem to wander off, whether they're doing it on purpose or panicked. You're not sure. Um, if you want, how to, far have we gone? I mean, I'm gonna say you've you've been. Let's say we'll, we'll give you like an hour into it, right? As you okay, I'll say agent agent Harbrook. I'm no expert in this area, but you've been following this blood trail for an awfully long time. Does it seem a bit odd that this person's probably lost a lot of blood and they're still going? How much longer do you think they can actually go? I don't know. It's, uh, it is odd. However, it may be blood from more than one person. We know there was a group. It's not Hard like, telling. it's not like pints of blood here. Like you're seeing. <laughs> no. You're seeing like drops like like this here and there, and you're also following footprints right. and things like that. Um, why don't you guys all, whoever wants to, but everybody can do another tracking roll for me. I'll give it a shot because yeah. I'm in this game too. <laughs> <laughs> tracking skills. Ah. Uh. I, I don't have any. I have tracking. no. I have no skills. In whoa, it, so whoa, 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 and roll it on the desk. <laughs> I don't. Ha I don't have die. What? what kind of role play are you? Get out of my house. Wait, what? <laughs> you always gotta do that. <laughs> Anyways, let's go here. Let's let's keep her moving. Okay, you guys lose the trail, and you find that you're lost after a while. I'm oh, good. Lost it, is good. Another couple hours go by. <sighs> it's probably about one or two in the afternoon. My cat is being annoying. Oh, I'm here. I'm listening. Sorry. Um, no, my cat. I got to chase her down. She's starting to be annoying. Uh, throw something at her. All right. I'm going to throw something at so her. So I have a pretty good sense of navigation. Um, yes, and you can, if you use a compass, I'll uh, give you a bonus die in it too. But... Oh, I, did. I don't I didn't think Dyer's a bad compass. tracker. I just think he's. I have a, I have if I have a compass. If you want to like ask for one, you can yeah. see me consulting, and I'm probably using it. If you use, oh, if you okay. if you use a compass, you can roll a bonus die, which means when you roll the navigation roll, roll the gray die instead of the green one. Okay. All right. I'll say, uh, agent. I notice you have a compass there. You mind if I take a look? Sure. All right. I just feel so, like my navigation. Just so that I'm not just going to start rolling navigation. What I'm trying to do here is um, basically use the directions that we were going to see a general direction that the trail was. To see if I can kind of figure out that direction that we went versus where the trail that we've obviously lost is. Okay. That's what I'm trying that's what I'm trying to do. Right? Okay. I'm not just going, oh, we're gonna roll navigation. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I like the explanation and the reason why. Alright, here we go. My navigation is actually pretty high, too. It's weird. Nope, you, uh, success. Yeah, I did that. You found that the, most, the trail you last knew 
was north of the road, and you find that you guys are south of the road going east right now. So you're on the south side of the road. So you figure you might have to double back a little bit to, to regain the trail at this point. All right. Explain to my mm -hmm. partners <laughs> that, oh, it looks like we've gone off the trail. But uh, if we double back around over that way, pointing towards the direction, <laughs> I think we can get ideally back on track. All right. Do I know what's over there? What's that? I mean, do I have a general idea what's over there or anything? Oh, I mean, we need a logging camp. I guess what I'm asking is how well would I know? You maybe went there once as a kid, and okay, maybe it so wasn't there. Well. It wasn't there where it happened, but like by truck, you can get there in a few hours. Like most, you know, good, mm -hmm. good, almost days drive. Um, <clears throat> but hiking, especially through the brush and the ups and downs and all the stuff, it's gonna it take you a couple of days to get there. Um, so yeah, it's mostly north and then it goes east later on, right? Uh, to out to the old logging camp. But the logging camp, you know, was owned by Lucas Strong many years ago. It shut down five or six years ago because that was his business when he took the uh, head position at the water board of Vermont. So you guys are what kind of businessman shuts down a successful business. Oh, yes. this guy, There's fishing going on here. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, you can, I mean, if, if Thomas is sharing that or if you've gathered that information from your research or whatever, I mean, you, well, I guess he's semi-distant family, right? So you would probably know that. Or, uh, yeah, sort of. I mean, how much is a brother to a cousin's wife really mean much? I, I guess you would probably. I met him. I mean, you I would. met the guy. Yeah. At and, probably the wedding. Sure. But. And you, We're not close by any stretch. Sure, yeah, I guess it would be, be your curiosity of who the person is in general because you're curious to know, not so much because people outright tell you. Well, no, I mean, I never realized until... I, I, let's say my character didn't even give it a thought until I was like, that's the old... That's Lucas's old shutdown logging what, that he closed down when he took the job for the state position. Mm -hmm. I mean... Where I, I don't know how you Americans do it, but from where I come from, yeah, no, I mean we no. don't walk away. We don't walk away from success. Nope, <laughs> I understand. I, I <laughs> saying it with a moderately condescending tone. Yep. <laughs> well, check that it says Meadows. Great. Oh, there. All right. So the agent tuned out, and the track and the uh, the woodsman there, who never really gives two crap no. what I have to no. say. No, what I was going to say, was it just successful when he shut it down? I haven't been here in a long time. I don't know. I don't know if... Would you have known that? I mean, I'm not sure I would keep track of... You know, I probably would have... My parents probably would have said something. Oh, they shut the logging thing down, but... I mean, not why or anything. I guess I would say you can do an intelligence check. An intelligence roll. Um, okay. I mean, I'm sure because of my history, I kept an eye on the news from this area, looking for weird things. But this, I wouldn't, may, this probably doesn't. I wouldn't say that's you know, weird in the category of weird that you're thinking of. No, no. But in keeping track of stuff, I might have garnered some. Oh crap. That's extreme. It was Information. shut down exactly. Extreme that, that was intelligence. A, that logging company was shut down exactly six and a half years ago. <laughs> it was successful. You need a, you need like a uh, like a sound effect when something extreme. It's like, you know, do, 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 extreme, extreme. Hmm. I agree. Anyway, anyway. So yeah, shut I'm down. just thinking like because I kept track of yeah just area that. It's just kind of, I know this because I've read it mm -hmm. while doing this. So, yeah. Nope, you would. Okay. It was shut down six and a half years ago. He had a successful business. He helped his employees. Well, he didn't actually help them find work. He basically gave them a severance package and said, we're done here. I don't need to do this anymore. What well, you heard, and he's like, I got elected to the board water position. And I'm set for life, and this is my passion and what I want to do. And he's, he's a goal 
work oriented man. He didn't want to double up and own two run. T- I, I don't think here's the thing. He works for the state. Maybe he couldn't run this while he was also working for the government. Maybe he had no choice, but instead of selling, he just shut it down and he dove into his work and he's been doing that for the last six years. And then until recent events have just occurred where he's put all that aside because he wants to find his daughter. My understanding is he shut it down because he didn't want to uh, sell it and he also didn't want to uh, run it anymore and try to run the other things he was doing. I don't know. That seems like something, an odd thing to hold on to, shutting it down. I mean, he did give the employees a severance package, but it seems like it was better to keep them employed. Hmm. Yes, a man in a position like his has a responsibility to more than just himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, oh, go ahead. Can't say that I disagree, but <laughs> not what we're here for. So, hey, we're just making conversation as we're trekking yeah. through the woods. No problem. It's about two in the afternoon. It's been about four hours into your journey. I'm oh, sorry, about two hours. So I'll say it's like three hours, uh, three o'clock. So it's about three hours in. You find your way back to the road. Okay. Um, what I want to ask you guys a question as you're making. Uh, what what are you wearing now? I don't know if you change your clothes, but like, what type of clothes are you wearing for your hike through the woods? Start with. Bernie. Oh, I did change my clothes. You did not change your clothes. All right. I did change my clothes. I said that's what I was leaving for. Okay, yeah, but w- w- I guess so, what what kind of outfit are you wearing, Bernie? You and Meadows, and what colors? I'm wearing um, a Norfolk jacket, so which is like like a forest green. Okay. Um, let me say. Let me send you. A, Wait, I can see Meadows see dressing like a, you if you wished him to. Yeah, he's probably. I mean, this is like it's 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 yeah. Just Google Norfolk jacket N O R F O L K, and you know it's generally outdoor wear um usually like hunting kind of thing that you'd probably wear hunting okay um so a lot of times it comes in kind of like a forest green or kind of or check pattern yep all right what about you uh agent hi i'm sure i'm wearing um some kind of not good pants uh, maybe I don't know with jeans a thing then. Uh, very only really for the working class. So probably some some tough pants of some kind and some hiking, some boots. Sure. Um, I'm sure I still have a like my button up shirt on. I probably have taken a tie off though, and yep. maybe traded my longer jacket for something more warm and more uh, easy to move around in in the woods. You can have a hunting coat or something similar. What, what, color, yeah, something what like colors that. did you go with on your jacket? Uh, I mean, so it's hunting. Is orange a thing now? I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, orange, it orange, no. No, it wasn't. It wouldn't be a thing. So. It'd be, you would wear, if you wanted to distinguish yourself in the woods, you would wear a sash or something like a fabric over probably your regular clothing if you wanted to it's not it's not uh, i'm gonna go with i probably didn't really want to distinguish myself so just some kind of darker color either a green or dark blue or maybe even a black or brown well you choose just say one i am not choosing today let's see yes you are it's... one let's <laughs> Let's see. Roll one D four. Good. Dark green. Perfect. Dire. What's I, maybe what he's wearing before? I just don't remember. Yeah, he's his his outfit hasn't changed much. He he's he wears he's got like a kind of a coat on over his shirt and kind of you know worn you know worn pants. Okay. And he doesn't. Nothing to identify himself. He's he tries to blend in. 
obviously. Okay. All right. Um. Okay, so depending on what's better for you, you can do a tracking or a spot hidden. Well, all of you guys. Just oh, we're doing that again? Oh my mm -hmm. god. We gotta get your track roll. <laughs> what? It doesn't really oh. matter how oh, many... Oh, spot like, hidden? We can tracking. spot hidden? I'm doing spot hidden, sorry. Alright. I was going to say, I'm like, I was supposed to be following you guys. Why am I getting all the successes? I don't know why I'm a huntsman at this point. It should be someone else altogether. I know. It's it's not your fault. I think your stat needs to be around a 60, 75, to be honest. Even at a 60 or a 75, yeah. these are going to fail. I've rolled two 99s. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know what that's happening. I mean, Gee. this is actually kind of pissing me off because nope. I failed everything. I, I don't disagree. I I... Not laughing at you. I'm laughing with you because I don't understand why that's happening. I mean, that's I'm not laughing. this is the point where your character's like, your character's like, it's all, it's it's you people around me. It's distracting me. I can't concentrate. At I'm this not point, used to this crap. Dyer just dis disappears from the group and is never seen from again. I'll start. In <laughs> Tweet. I get all this shit. Uh, hello, yeah, my name it. is. I think he takes it with him. Swire. <laughs> all right. Well. You guys manage to get back on the trail and find a set of footprints. And then, as you're following a little bit, you're back north of the road. You're kind of going northeasterly. Um, you're going a little bit longer. It's probably like 3.30, 3.40. Um, it's, it's nope. get, the, the trees are, are pretty thick here. They're big. They're large. Um, there's some thick underbrush sometimes. It slows you down. And then I'm going to call for listen rolls from everybody at this point. Ooh, that's a new one. Listen, listen, listen. Hey, there's my 90 something. Bernard is, Dyer's, you know, is leading. See, your problem, Dem, is that you're rolling as Dem. You need to be rolling as Dyer. Kurt is rolling as Kurt too. No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't matter. He's not rolling as Thomas. Thomas, you can, Thomas. You can change it under the little gear at the top. But anyway. Yeah. So or, Thomas. Or as, at, the at the bottom, there's a drop down. It says. Yeah. I oh yeah. There we go. Just hadn't gotten to it. Sorry. Um, Thomas. There's making small talk. You're tracking. You're keeping your your eyes peeled. And then, somewhere up ahead, probably like 30, 40 paces. Like over a small rise, you hear a piece of wood or like a twig snap. Let me ask you a question. Do you have your dog? Did you bring your dog with you? Heck yeah. Because I'm, I'm not going to remember that. So you're going to have to constantly remind me. And I don't I don't know oh, if I'm going to have you. Got a old, you got an old hound dog? No. I, he's a, he's a black lab. What's your dog's name? Uh, Spike. Oh, God. <laughs> You know what's weird? Growing up, we had a black lab named Spike. My parents. Mm, that is very weird. I did pick black lab because we had a black lab when I was younger. I but swear you did it to me on purpose. You make it hard for me to be mean to your dog. But anyway. So yes, I have. So Spike is definitely with me. Spike goes pretty much everywhere with me that he can. Okay. So. He's been sniffing along. He he listens. He hears the tug snap too. He kind of like his ears perk up as your ears perk up. I kind of hold up my hands. And I don't know where I am. I, I mean, who's in front? Who's in back? That's up to you guys to determine your marching order. Is the woodsman leading? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll be in front. And He's been and demoted to the back of the group. Back of the group. <laughs> All back of the bus. He's your heavy right now. Uh, He's got the guns. I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in the lead at the moment then. And then I'll, uh, so when I hear the twig snap, I kind of stop and mm -hmm. 
hold up my hand mm -hmm. and I listen again to see if I hear anything else. You can hey, do listen. Kurt, or I'm sorry, Thomas, you may do a spot hidden roll because of you heard spot hit. since you heard the noise. Yes. Okay, spot hidden and listen. I did successfully so far. Oh, oh snap, Kurt! Make sure make sure you mark yeah. these uh, skills that if you succeeded on them, you're listening. Your spot hidden right now, Kurt. For sure. Yeah, I just I just did that because I was okay. just thinking. Yeah, I need not to making that. them feel any better by saying. That. I, you know what? I'm just talking <laughs> no, as I mean, I'm supposed to talk. Once the stream ends, you guys can level up your characters, and I'll just uh, head off. No one's leveling up. No one's leveling up at all. <laughs> you're not been far enough yet. Anyway, thank you. Um, okay. When does it become the... So, you get to the small rise and you see, Thomas, as you look up ahead, you see a pair, you see two people. Um, someone, a taller, a taller man, you can tell by his body shape, and a person that's about half their height. And both are carrying rifles and packs. Their backs are to you. They are they are kind of slowly making their way, creeping, like just north, along us. Looks like a small bunny trail. Are these deputies? I feel like we should have had some kind of markings for deputies, and not deputies. <laughs> well, the oh, second the person next to him is about half their height, and they're very much thinner, smaller body. So, a really tall person and a child? Maybe their backs are to you. Okay. They both have rifles, like, pointed down in front of them as they walk side by side, and they both have hunting packs on their backs. The one on the smaller person is smaller, because they are smaller. Okay. I just watch them for a minute, see what they do. They creep. You see the small one, like look up and like, <laughs> like, and they they're not their backs are to you, like I said, and why don't you go ahead and make a, a well, I mean, I, did you, you said you stopped? Yeah, I stopped and kind of just watching. It looks like, to me, it looks like people were just hunting, and I'm not sure. Presumably, if he stopped and he's staring at something, we too would notice him stop and staring at something. Well, yeah. I, yeah. So I kind of, I guess I would gesture them. Mm -hmm. I kind of turn and put it, my finger to my lips and gesture them up. Okay. Uh, in response to that, I'm going to take out my binoculars and look at these guys, or in that direction. Yep. You guys both see him now. Spike's being very good and watching. Uh, Meadows is standing by your side. And you can definitely tell. It, it, it's a man. He's got hunting gear on. And he's, as you look at the side of the small kid looking up at him, you can definitely tell it's, it's a young boy. Um, you know, maybe between 10 and 12 from this distance, you can tell. And, uh, yep. Uh, okay. So I think, uh, I'm gonna, how far away are they? They're about third. Uh, I'll say they're about like 40 paces, 40 yards. All right. Let's, uh, let's hail these two hunters. Do you hail? Yes. They're startled like, oh, and they, they turn around, um, their guns lowered. Of course. You're like, you're like, whoa, don't shoot. Don't shoot. Don't have my gun up or anything, do I? No. Hello? No, I mean, I don't have my gun even out. I'm kind of holding the rifle. Well, I guess I do I, have a shotgun, but I mean, it's just like. I mean, I have a I have a rifle, but it's like I have it kind of cradled in my arm, pointing down. I'm not sure. really having it. He turns around like he's got one hand up. He's holding his gun down, but his other hand's up. He's like, "What?" You know, he said, "Don't shoot." He's like, "Hey, hey there." Hey. And they they start. Nobody's gonna shoot. They start kind of like, he's like, he tells, like the, the kid comes around, his gun was like halfway up and his, you know, the, the man like puts his arm down and like pushes the boy's gun down to the ground. He's like, all right. And he's like, 
Hi. They start ta- taking some steps towards you. Do you guys approach them? Yeah. Sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, I do. Yeah. Okay. He comes up and you have to see it's a man. And he's like, he goes, he goes, hi, uh, uh, my name's Alistair, Alistair Lawson. This is, this is my boy, George here. Um, I'm, I'm agent Highbrook. Uh, we're out here looking for the lost girl. Maybe you heard a- her. Agent Hy- Hy- agent girl. What are, you, what are you talking about? We're, we're on a hunting trip. We're all, we're, we're out here from Boston. Oh, there's a, there's a city of, well, a town of that away. And, uh, a child was abducted from there a few days ago. We we're a part of the search party out looking for. Her. Oh, he goes, you talking about Bennington, right? City back there? Yeah. He goes, we stopped in there before we came out, but we've been out here for better part of six days or so now. So, wow. He goes, a girl, girl got kidnapped? Yeah, it's a ransom demand that went wrong. You oh. two hear anything, see anything funny? No, we haven't seen, heard anything, anything, uh, nothing. As a matter of fact, I mean, we, let's say we're on a camping trip out from Boston with with our neighbors, my my buddy Brian and his twelve year old boy, just a couple years younger than uh, George here. We're just a couple of dads wanting to teach our boys how to hunt. We've been up here, like I said, almost a week. Um, and we we stay closer to the Bennington side, but Brian and his boy they went they went deeper into the forest about uh, three days ago. And uh, seen them. He goes, no, 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 we we split up. We've been kind of keeping an eye out for him. I haven't seen him. Uh, let me correct that. They've only been out there for three days. Um, right, side room and try. Okay, one second. He go, okay, one. Let, let me let me say this. They've only been out here for about three days or so. About yeah, a day ago, the other two went off just a little bit further in the forest. He goes, no, I haven't heard anything. Just an occasional like diesel truck running somewhere out to the east, probably running up some some back road somewhere. But that's about it. We haven't ventured that far into the forest as of yet. Well, I have to warn you. There are people who are after the hot these woods that are armed. You might want to think about cutting your trip short. Oh, no. The kid's like, ah, that's okay, Dad. I'm ready to go back if you are. Sure, sure. He goes, all right, all right. Probably do that, but... Um, anybody can make, if they wish... Let me look at a character sheet here. Psychology. Psychology is something you can make. Um, definitely, a psychology role can be made. My psychology role sucks. I'm good at persuading people, though. <laughs> I. Uh, I mean, psychology is not true. necessarily a heavy stat. That uh. Oh, I mean, I can go out and make one because it's good. Sure. Who's <laughs> you? What are you trying to psychology them about? I was trying to do them. I was trying to be medals there. Oh, look at that shit. Jeez, <laughs> oh, Pete. All right. You can tell that the boy, the boy is quite frightened, and it's not of you. Not of you guys. He's just, he seems to be a little unnerved. Which, what's your name, son? Uh, George. 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 George, you hear anything? Or see anything funny around here? Uh, um, no, not not funny around here. It's just he looks at his dad, and his dad kind of like looks at him back, and he's kind of like, and the boy's like, my dad and I are both having some real bad dreams, just kind of spooky dreams. Last couple of nights when we were out here, but. I don't. I don't really remember what they're about. Just, just kind of weird. Wake up, kind of, you know, twitchy, edgy, son, edgy, e- edgy, edgy. That, that's it, though. You know. 
Soon, nothing in particular. Some dreams. Some stands out. Sound, maybe. They both really seem kind of reluctant to say more, but you can tell they're, with your hard roll, I mean, you can definitely tell that they're holding back. I will attempt to persuade them. Persuasion allowed. There we go. Success. This is better than the Harry Dagger Dean. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> Private investigator. Okay. So, what do you say? It's... it's it's okay to tell me. I'm just looking for clues and maybe something you dreamt about is something you might have heard or smelled or just, All right. you know, if you both had the same dream. Alistair's like, and he's like hiking his pack back up. He's like, all right, I'll tell you this, but we're going to head back to town. And I'll tell you something else too, but uh, we our dreams were similar. We kept dreaming that we were drowning in some big body of water. It was like water was black and oily kept going down your throat and we were just you know, trying to swim to the surface but it was too heavy and pulled you down like you were swimming in oil or something I don't know it, it's dumb there's dreams but got us on edge a little bit hmm. and now now Brian and Arthur they're they're further out in the forest so <laughs> so I'm going to bed. do me do me a favor guys we're, we're gonna head back into Bennington but um can you can you be on a lookout for Brian and Arthur, and send them back if you find them? Sure. I mean, if we find anybody, we're gonna send them back more than likely. So yeah, if we see them, we'll tell them that you headed back and that they should do the same. All right. He goes. If if you see Bri- uh you can't miss Brian. He's got a big old white Texan hat that he brought with him to keep out of the sun. Like it's one of those big like ten gallon hats or whatever they call them. Big and white. So you see that you you can't miss them. Just tell me to get back. We'll be we'll stay back in Bennington at the hotel and wait for them to arrive. And his son's wearing colors on him like my son is. And you can see that the boy's like wearing like like a yellow sash to kind of mark him a little bit. He goes, I, I appreciate it, guys. I appreciate it. Let us know. And he goes, and um, I appreciate the help that you had to offer us. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, one other thing. I. We came across also a group of painters or artists a few days back as well. Might want to tell them if you see them. They they offered for us to camp with them. We didn't end up camping with them, but they're real nice people. Like five or six people, young kids from the University of Boston, out painting scenery and stuff. So you might want to let them know if you see them too. I think they're more northeast of this position. Artist? Yeah, you know, out Doing their artist thing, probably for a class assignment, whatever. I don't know. Whatever kids at big hotshot universities do. Fancy painting. Hmm. Fancy painting. You know, fancy painting. Oils. Painting. Oil paints, you know. Well, paint is oil, I guess, right? So, anyway, thanks. Thanks, guys. We're going we're gonna to go now. Okay. Okay. Come on, George. George's like, thanks, mister. You're welcome, George. And as they leave and head behind you guys, leaving you back on, as you find your way back onto the trail, it's getting to be more mid-afternoon now. Now, the sun doesn't go down to like 6.37 like at a time, but since it's such thick woods, it actually gets darker in the woods. One and a half, two hours, you know, it starts to before it actually goes dark outside, you know, the sun sets because of the trees. So that is where we are going to conclude for tonight. As we are at our limit. So I think everybody joined us out there in the world. And come back next week to see us in Cthulhu Goo and Miss the Ancient Trees episode two. And we, we watch our group as they fade and go back into the forest with their dog and trusty Meadows, the sidekick, to come back for another hair raising adventure next week when things get real. So, uh, shout outs, anybody? Anybody good? Anyone want to say? Hello, goodbye, anything like that? Okay. We're good? All right. Well, I'm Lucas. This is Lucas G. Variety. Follow, like, subscribe. Find all our stuff in the description in the chat below. Thanks for joining. Thanks for playing. And we'll see you next time.